Hello enemies and book lovers, my name is Ash and welcome welcome back to my channel. We are here for my June TBR. It's halfway through the year. Crazy, isn't it? I haven't filmed in a long time and I'm slacking on my videos and you know, I decided to film, but it's also a beautiful day out and you can probably hear in the background the lawnmowers just going off in the distance. They just don't stop. So I apologize, but the long weekend just finished and everyone's going into work and now all mowing the lawns. So I apologize. That's gonna be in the background, but I literally have to do it now or else I'll have no time to do it later. Uh, this week I'm gonna be really busy. I'm going to Toronto to a convention that's gonna be three days long. I do not have time to edit <laughs> during those times, so I'm gonna have to be filming this now. So I do apologize for the background noise. I'm gonna go on to my Sims portion of the video in a moment. I did decide to do, do four prompts again for this video. I was going to do three, but I, I changed my mind again and did four instead. I will be doing four. If I cannot get to all four, that's fine, but I'm going to be doing my best to get to as much as I can. So let's go to the video and see what I am going to be reading for the month of June. Hello everyone, welcome back to my Sims portion of the video. Right now, Karina is looking for another man because like I said, she's polyamorous. So I want her to find another man. I did this off camera, but every single man in this, this world is married. I don't know why, just almost everyone is married in this world. I'm gonna have you actually meet the first character that I created. He's one of my favorites I've ever made. I really like him, but I don't know if he's going to be the one that she chooses, but it's obviously an option. So let me show you. Oh, well, he's right outside, okay. So he's in his uh, winter outfit with his fox sweater on. Okay, so this is Min Jun Bae, and this is his sister, Hing Yu Bae. And I love these two so much. Um, so let me introduce myself. I just want her to say hi. I don't want her to actually, you know, get into a relationship yet. It's a bit fast. So we're just gonna say hi. And um, that's it. And we're just gonna leave because I need to do a TBR portion of the video. Poor guy, he's just, I'm tired, I'm leaving. <laughs> okay, goodbye. And then Darian, I think that's his name, is also home. So I will show you him really quickly. But these are the two that I have options with. Um, it's hard to choose because I have made both of them and they look great and it's really hard to pick. He is a single bachelor, he lives alone, so yeah, I'll just go say hi to him. Okay, I don't know why they're so close together, but this is Darian, who's also pretty attractive. But I think she's going to eventually choose depending on what she, who she kind of likes more. So let me actually see what she thinks about both of the characters. So Darian, let's see what she says about Darian. He is perceived as attractive to her, which is good. Uh, Minjun, does Minjun come off as attractive. Also attractive. So she's attracted to both of them. So this is going to be interesting. I think she's going to go like on a date with both of them and kind of see how she feels. But for now, we're going to go back home and pick books because that's what we're here for. So let's go do that. I'll do this off screen because I have not been taking care of these plants whatsoever. Oopsies. So let's go just um, just pick up the books. Also, I know why Mirabelle was running away. Mirabelle was running away because she could not get to the litter box. The, the litter box used to be right here but she couldn't reach it for some reason so i had to put it outside um and she was running away because her me needs weren't being met so now that's outside fingers crossed she hasn't run away yet they're also almost adults so both of them are six days from aging up so they're going to be rolling for babies soon which is terrifying the, t the most i can get is four i'm really hoping she doesn't get four she could also have twins and yeah i, I would say one or two would be nice so i'm gonna actually have her choose books right now because we need to start so let's read something like i said we're choosing three and let's go and see what the first one's going to be so i'm just gonna try integrating this with um an lgbtqia plus book because it's pride month so let's see what it is the first one is an emotional book so this is a genre prompt emotional book gives me a little bit of room. I wouldn't say a lot, but emotional book can be anything that really makes me emotional in any regard. Um, so yeah, I am okay with this. Okay. I'm gonna have Mitchell choose the next one. I, I did not learn my lesson, I guess. So we're gonna have him choose something. Oh gosh, Wicked Wims is on. I can't show that. That was dangerous. Okay, so he's gonna read something. He didn't wash his hands. That's not sanitary, Mitchell, and you just touched your book. The nerve. All right, so the next prompt that we're going to have is, please stop moving the book. Excuse me, sir. Oh, he's not a goofball. He's just, he's just him. Oh my God, I got another TBR jar. Okay, I'm kind of excited about this. I actually got TBR jar last month. So TBR jar again, which means I have to pick a random book, which is not great, but Oh boy, this is actually not good at all. But I'm gonna go for it. I don't know if I'll be able to finish all these books, but... So yeah, this is gonna be interesting. Uh, I don't have control over this at all, so that's fun. I think there's about six prompts out of 
like 16 or 17 that I can't choose from. It's all like random. So that's kind of hard for me, but I will do my best and see how that goes. So let's do one more. We'll do one more. Uh, like I said, if I get a double, if I get a double of any of the ones I already chose, I'm not going to count it. So hopefully this is a different one. It is a different one. Okay. This one is a fantasy. This I get so often, which is very kind to me. So this is a fantasy book. Anything that is a fantasy book. That's very kind. Um, yeah, this is probably one of the easiest prompts I have on this entire list, and I've gotten it quite a lot. So we have an emotional book, TPR jar, and a fantasy. Now, I wasn't supposed to do a fourth one. I think I'm gonna do it anyway. This will be like a bonus book. If I get to this book, I'll try, but if I can't, then that's fine. Unless it's like an easy one to get to, then I will get to it. But let's go just one more prompt, um, because it's a little bit easier. Emotional and fantasy are pretty easy. TBR jar is the one that's a little bit difficult. So we're gonna do one more. Let's just go upstairs. I don't know why these gnome things are kind of creepy. Put them here. And hope they don't do anything weird to my household. Okay, so we're going to read something again and let's see what she chooses. Where is she going to go sit? Okay, there's a, there's a bunch of chairs, but sure. We'll just go, we'll go all the way downstairs, I guess. Okay, the last one is candy cover. Perfect, so this is just pick a random um, candy and then correlate the book cover to the color from the candy. So I'm actually going to go and do that right now because it's just a lot faster to do. Uh, so yeah, we're going to close off the TBR portion and thank you Karina and thank you Mitchell for choosing books for me. Next episode we'll be kind of dating around and seeing who she prefers and then they'll become a relationship and so on and so okay, forth. So. so we saw what happened and it was a not too bad of a time. Um, I actually think I could do a pretty decent job with this. So like I said in the video in my Sims TBR portion, I am going to be reading as much as I can of LGBTQIA plus books because it is Pride Month in June and I myself have only discovered in 2020 that I am Demi and Pan. I used to think I was straight. I don't know how I did. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I went to Pride when I was like a teenager and then when I worked, I had a crush on my female supervisor. Um, and I still didn't realize, like, you know, maybe that's not straight. But now I'm like, it, make, it makes sense now. It makes sense now. So I am demisexual, panromantic. So it's weird that I'm actually, you know, celebrating pride now with me instead of being an ally. I'm really excited about this month. So there are going to be a few books that are not LGBTQA+, plus because I have to read them. And then there are some, of course, that I can squeeze in that will be. So let's go and see what those books are. With one of these books, I have to read this for a book club. So this is for the Ketchup Book Club. This is The Last Argument of Kings by Joe Abercrombie. Like I said, this will be for the Ketchup Book Club. This will also fit my fantasy prompt for my Sims game, which is nice because I did need to read this anyway. And this also fits for the Irelium annual like year-long readathon kind of thing that you do every single month there's a new prompt and this one was a book that i already own so i do own this book so i'm going to be using this for a book i own this actually fills three kind of criteria in this month so it's really good that i'm reading it this is a long one though this is almost 700 pages so this is a long long one but this is from the ketchup book club we've been reading the first law trilogy and this is the last book in the first law trilogy but there are books kind of go off of this and will continue forward so the ketchup book club will be doing this readathon for the next like a year and a half. Grim Dark Adult Fantasy Trilogy that is really character based and I've talked about it multiple times, so I won't get too far into it, but yes, it is very character heavy. So if you do not like the characters or you don't like character driven stories, you might not like this, but if you do enjoy these characters and character driven stories, I would recommend it. But yeah, it is pretty grim dark. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I have read dar darker books, but it is pretty melancholic. Not a lot of positive things happen in this book, but I'm looking forward to seeing if I will like this one as much as the second one because I did enjoy the second one. I'll talk about that in my wrap-up, but yes, I'm excited to be getting to this book and seeing the live show and the Ketchup Book Club and everyone's thoughts on it. A book I forgot to actually mention that I'm bringing from May into June is going to be Kingdom of Ash by Sarah Mass. I will not be finishing this in May. I actually might not even finish it in June. I will have to try my best to, but I'm going to be having a reading vlog on this. This is only the cover because I have the book over there. But I'm gonna be trying to get through this and it's gonna be a slow read for me and I don't think I could be able to finish it in a month. So I think I'm gonna just take my time with it. I'll probably finish it in June, if not July. So I probably won't talk much about this book until I get it up my reading vlog and my like convention footage will be in this vlog too. So if you're kind of curious about that, this will be continuing on, if not the next month, then the one after that. The next book is actually one I've been looking forward to reading for a long time, ever since it was announced. And I've already actually started it a little bit early and I'm really, 
really hyped to finally get to it. And that is The Sun and the Star by Rick Riordan and Mark Ashiro. And this book I have been looking forward to, like I said, for a long time now, ever since it was announced. I don't really want to talk too much about what it's about. Um, it does obviously follow Nico D'Angelo, which is one of my favorite characters in the Rick Riordan universe. One of the favorites. I have a lot of favorites, but he's definitely one of them, especially in the Percy Jackson books, like the first, you know, five to ten books. This doesn't fill any prompts, but it is an LGBTQIA plus book, so I wanted to add it. I'm just looking forward to this. I am so excited about this because I love Nico. Nico is my everything, so yeah, I'm excited about it. I even have a Nico D'Angelo t-shirt, so I mean, I, I do like him a lot. This follows two characters, Nico and Will, and they go into Tartarus, into the pits of hell, to find a friend from the prior series. Definitely recommend reading, obviously, the other books before getting to this book. There are spoilers, big spoilers especially for the Maze Runner and like the end of the series so do not get to this if you haven't finished the main Rick Riordan stories even like the later ones. I'm hoping for some cuteness and hoping for some you know happiness in this book and I'm hoping that it will not disappoint me. Getting to this in June finally I've been looking forward to this book for a while. So the next one is actually one that V from the Sassy Library Fox kind of like influenced me to read. So if you're watching this, hey, I have the whole series of this or I think the whole trilogy of this on my Kindle. So I've had this for a while, I think at least two years now. I've been kind of dissuaded to read it for certain reasons, but then V was talking about it in a video and I was just like, okay, you know what? Maybe this is a sign that I need to read this finally and try it. I don't know if I'll like it, but I'm gonna try my best and see if I'll enjoy it. I'll also be meeting the criteria, hopefully for my sins, pick for an emotional book. I don't know if this will fit for an emotional book, but I'm assuming with all the trigger warnings that have been talked about that this is probably a pretty emotional book in some regard. So I'm gonna just hope that this does fit that criteria because I'm not 100% sure. And this is going to be The Foxhole Court by Norak Sakovich. I'm going to be finally getting to this in June. Like I said, it's like a long time coming. I should have read it a while ago, but I'm finally going to be getting to it. Now, I'll be honest with you, I don't know much about it. I do know it's about a lacrosse team. I do know it's LGBTQIA+, and there are, are a lot of trigger warnings in it. So obviously, like I said, be wary if you are interested in this. I don't know what the trigger warnings are. I personally, honestly, don't think I need trigger warnings, and I don't like to look at them because I don't like to know what I'm going into. The only books I think I would never be able to read is like, the really 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 hard hitting ones like the little life i couldn't read that but i think i can handle this i'm gonna see if i can okay i think maybe i kind of read a little bit of what this book is about we're following a character whose father is a crime lord and eventually finds like you know obviously a relationship some maybe some friendships there's not a whole on what this book is about which is fine by me i don't like usually knowing much going into a book anyway but like i said it has a lot of things within it so i am nervous but i'm actually kind of looking forward to seeing if I'll enjoy this book or not. So yes, uh, thank you V for <laughs> making me want to read this book because I definitely am going to be getting to it in June. A little bit nervous, but we're gonna see how I feel about it. So the, I guess, technically fourth book, I guess, if you don't count Kingdom of Ash, if you do count Kingdom of Ash, I guess then this is my fifth book for the month. So my fifth book of the month is going to be my candy cover. I will show the clip of me, you know, just picking the candy out. I did this right after my Sims TBR video. I do need to film my Sims TBR about halfway through the month because I need to put holds on my library books and make sure that I have these books available to me. So I need like half a month to prepare. Um, so that's why I'm like sitting in the exact same spot and in the exact same clothes because I did film this directly after the Sims part. And thankfully this actually did work out for me anyway. So let me just show you what color I got and clip to that and then we'll come back to me. So let's go and do that now. Okay, so I got my little gummy bears and we're going to be choosing a color and we're going to see what it correlates with and so on and so forth. So let's see what I get. I won't dig too deep. Even though these are my gummy bears. The color is ooh, green. We got a nice green, kind of like a lime, darker shade of green. This is the darkest shade I have in here. So I would just say like a darker green. As you saw, I got green. This is a bit of a darker shade of green, but I'm going to just loosely use this as like a green in almost any shade, but hopefully as long as there's darker shades on it, that will work. And I actually have an arc that I really wanted to get to this month. It is going to be coming out in July, the actual book itself. And when I had this arc on hold from NetGalley, I was like hoping, hoping, hoping I can get this arc. And I was so excited when I finally got it, like a month and a half later, I was finally accepted for the arc and I am so, so hyped and so excited to be getting to this book. Now this is not LGBTQIA+, but it's still a book that I am really just looking forward to trying out. This is a debut novel by Anna Sortino and this is Give Me a Sign. This is a book with a deaf and hard of hearing main character. The author herself is also deaf. I know I say excited too much in my TBRs, but I am very excited about this book. So I am very bad at studying. I slack very hard 
but I am currently, and I have been for a while studying ASL. I'm not very far into it, but I am learning it. Uh, Bill Vicars, he is a teacher on YouTube who puts his entire like class sessions on his channel. He also has a website. I will link his channel below because he is definitely worth a watch if you want to learn ASL. ASL is American Sign Language, so this book, I've never really read many books with American Sign Language. The Magnus Chase Trilogy is one of the only books I've ever read with ASL in it. I'm not like the best at it, and I've never really practiced with someone that is in the deaf community, so I'm not sure if I'm actually decent enough at it, but I do enjoy learning it. It is an amazing language, and I do think a lot of people should at least learn basics of it because it is really important to know some type of sign language. The YouTube life, <laughs> am I right? This is a YA romance and probably a contemporary, which I'm not usually a fan of, but because of the ASL integrated into it, I'm actually still looking forward to trying it. So it seems like Lila is going to be going to a summer camp for the deaf and blind, and she meets new people there and she kind of catches up on her ASL and there's a counselor, a deaf counselor, who kind of helps her learn more ASL and she kind of has a little relationship with him. I'm hoping for the best. Obviously I have a little bit higher hopes. I probably shouldn't. You know, this is a debut novel. It might not be perfect, but I'm really looking forward to this, especially for an author who is deaf. You don't really see that very often in the publishing industry and I really want to give it a shot and hopefully I will enjoy it. Okay, so the next one I don't really have to really have much of a description for or an introduction for because I think almost every single person on booktube knows about this book and that is Legends in the Lattes by Travis Bouldry. This is not anything to do with my prompts, this is just what I wanted to read. I wanted to read an LGBTQIA plus book that was queer and sapphic and I'm pretty sure this one is sapphic. And this follows a orc who opens a coffee shop I believe after you know her rough and tumbling of the past and her journeys and adventures and she just wants a kind of calm down and open the shop and I wanted to read this before the hype because it really gave me the Dungeons and Dragons vibe and I play and watch pretty heavily Dungeons and Dragons and I am a DM kind of myself. I've been in the D&D thing for like I think about three years now. I'm looking forward to trying this out and seeing if it kind of gives me that D&D vibe. I have really nothing to say about this other than that because we all kind of know what this book is about and we've seen it everywhere so I'm a little bit nervous. The hype Usually hype drives me down when I read books. It makes me not like a book as much. When a book is incredibly hyped, I usually have my expectations too high and then I don't end up enjoying it as much as I might have before I knew about the hyped. So I kind of, it's my own fault. I should have read this before it all got hyped up, but I have too many books on my TBR. And the last book is going to be my last prompt for The Sims game and that was TBR Jar. I'll obviously be cutting to my TBR Jar portion because I did this prior as well. Here's my TBR Jar and uh, I did pick a book out. I did not cheat. It looks like I did because it was such a perfect book but I did not cheat. So let's go into that video now. Uh, I'm about to go to the gym, but first, TBR jar. So I didn't show you last time, but here is my legend. It might be hard to read. Let me see if I can get it close. Is that good? Is that okay? Let's pick a book. Hopefully something good first. Okay. I got one. All right, so I have, <gasps> I got an adult fantasy. It's a lot more recent. It's 184. The only one I didn't want was an adult fantasy book. So, okay, hmm. let's see what this book is. I'll show you first. Spear. That is so vague. Let me see if I can find out what that is. This is not as bad as I thought it was. It's not that bad. This is Spear by Nicola Griffith. This is a standalone fantasy book, so this is actually not too bad, and it's only 300 and... No, it's actually 184 pages. This is a very short book. Uh, I'm not mad about it. And this is queer. It's sapphic. This is awesome. This is awesome. Okay, let me go talk about what it's about and kind of more detail about it in my TBR portion. So let's go do that now. So as you saw in that clip, I got the book Spear. This is by Nicola Griffith. And this is a sapphic book, which um, mind blowing that I actually managed to pull a sapphic book because I really wanted to. I'm really thankful for the jar. It was very kind to me this month. So this is following a girl who lives within a cave with her mother. She kind of like lives in the wilderness with her mom. And one day she has a vision of a court or a place somewhere else in the world. And she kind of decides to adventure toward it. Brimming with magic, eager to test her strength, she breaks her covenant with her mother and decides to go to the court. On her adventure, she meets great knights to steal the hearts of beautiful women. She'll fight warriors and sorcerers and she will find her love and the lake and her fate. This is, like I said, a really short book. It seems like it's gonna be very much of a little adventuring kind of story and i am not mad about that i actually do enjoy books with adventure and travel so this seems like something i would like i don't really know if it's going to be something that's really great because it only is 184 pages my library has a copy of this i didn't get it in time to like hold it for you very very sad <laughs> but i will get it a physical copy of this which is cool and yeah i'm looking forward to this the beautiful beautiful cover and 
Like I said, I'm not sure if I'll love this because it is a shorter book and there's not as much information that we could packed into it. With a fantasy book too, a standalone fantasy that's under 200 pages it might be hard to execute well, but I'm giving Nicole Griffith a pretty good chance that this will probably be good. Looking forward to giving this a shot and seeing if I enjoy it. So that is all for my TBR for June. I will be reading six books and obviously I'll be going through Kingdom of Ash, so I'll be reading seven, probably finishing six. I mean, my, maybe. I don't really usually finish my TBRs, so I'm gonna try my best to see if I can get to all these books. So I will put up a little bit of a, a picture of the prompts and the books I'm gonna be reading. Kingdom of Ash is not in this because I do not actually plan on finishing it in June. So yeah, this will be the books I plan on finishing in June with Kingdom of Ash being one that I will continue. Let me know what you plan on reading for June, just like one or so books. You don't have to tell me all the books. What are the books you're most looking forward to reading in June? So as always, thank you so much for watching. I am glad you're here and I appreciate you for watching my videos as always. If it's your first video, if it's like your 10th video of mine, I appreciate you as always, as always. So with that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. I hope you have a great reading month and I hope to see you all soon. Goodbye everyone.